We had something stolen from our campsite in broad daylight. And you won't believe it. As you probably noticed, we're not doing our normal opening and uh, there's a good reason for that. Um, Liz and I just took a drive and uh, we were gone for about 45 minutes or an hour and we came back and Liz's bike was stolen. My $4,000 e-bike and honestly with this whole house arrest thing that the whole world is under, the e-bike has been my lifeline and I've been telling Paul every day as soon as this rain stops, yeah. we'll be able to take a bike ride. We, were gonna, we actually thought about taking one today but it was raining off and on so we decided to just go for a drive instead and we came back and I had just stopped at the office and picked up some packages, one of them being a, a part that, that Liz's bike needed. So we drove up and I'm, I'm getting my head geared up towards, okay, I gotta go into fix it mode. And Liz said, where's my pretty bike? Because we park it under the overhang on the fifth wheel, locked up of course, a big heavy lock and they had cut the lock. We're just heartbroken. And uh, they did, it, they used a special tool, right? For the yeah, lock. it from the looks of the cable, it was a cable lock, and uh, they didn't defeat the lock. They cut the cable. It feels premeditated. We're in a high-end campground, and it's not cheap to be here, so um, we're just sick about it. You know, one of the things about this life, and a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to get on the road, and it's going to be nonstop vacation. Well, we're here to tell you that the same problems that you have at home are also out here. So you may have had experience with your car being broken in or something stolen out of your yard. Well, that can also happen in RV life. And we found out after the fact that there's a, a number of homeless encampments around us. They're invisible to us. We didn't see them. The police officer that came and took the report said, oh yeah, there, there's encampments all over. And he's pointing out in towards the, the sand dunes. Liz called the office when we got back and realized what had happened. And I think she did. you did that before you called the police, right? Mm -hmm. We weren't real happy with the way they... The first thing out of this woman's mouth was, well, it's not... We're not responsible for any of that. There's homeless people around here. Right. So that's not what I want to hear. So if you're in management, you probably know this. But if you don't, if someone calls you and they're really upset about a theft, the first thing to say is, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. Instead, she was basically saying, it's not my fault. It's not my fault and was very defensive. So I came right back with, oh, so you're saying there's a lot of thefts here and you haven't told us? You haven't because you haven't done your part to protect us, to tell us there's a lot of thefts. And she goes, oh, no, no, there hasn't been any thefts. So, you know, it was a little fishy. And most of you who are out on the road now are probably hunkered down. You know that a lot of campgrounds are closing or they're at least not accepting new people. So I can't really speak my mind about, you know, how poorly the call was handled. But I do think management could have taken some responsibility or at least said that they were sorry and offered to help, particularly if somebody here on the campground with us has that bike. I was hoping that they would be helpful about that, but they're clearly not going to help us get it back. We don't want to compound this by, by being kicked out of a park when, the, when parks are closing. Whoever did this has either a very serious cable cutter or a cordless grinder. I can't see a homeless person carrying one of those around and it feels premeditated i feel like sure you know a homeless person could steal a bike but if you see a homeless person on my bike my bright red four thousand dollar bike you're going to be like mm, something's not right with this picture yeah so yeah i, I mean it's noticeably it's noticeable that it's a high-end bike it's 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 not some it looks expensive it's not some cheap walmart special you may be wondering why i have such a fancy expensive bike so a few months ago, I broke my hand while test riding an e-bike. And if you don't know... A life-changing move. <laughs> right. That's how Paul came into my life. E-bikes are really heavy. And so when I was test riding this heavy e-bike, it landed on my hand and broke it. So the bike that we got for Liz is, was a carbon fiber frame. With carbon fiber bikes, you get lighter weight, but you pay more money for it. But now I can lift it. Or could. 
when I had it. <laughs> no, there's no lifting now. There's no, there's no Un bike now. Unfortunately. It's not like we can replace it. The bike was not cheap. As we mentioned, it was over $4,000. This was a splurge for Paul to buy me my Christmas present. He's put a lot of time into getting the bike geared just right for me. And it's just not in the budget to just go out and buy another bike. So we're hit hard by it. And like I said, this has been my lifeline as something that I've been looking forward to do because our options are limited. I'm sure where you are, your bars and restaurants are closed. You can't go out to explore. If you're out in an RV in a campground, you probably can't go out and explore the parks. The national parks near us are closed. All the wineries and all the tourist attractions are closed. And one thing, even the stores are closed. Like I decided to call area pawn shop to see, you know, if we can track this bike down. Well, the pawn shops are closed too. We know that e-bikes are more and more popular, particularly if you're out there camping. So please use our experience as a lesson. We have some tips for you. We hope you never get anything stolen from your campsite. We learned some hard lessons. So here, uh, here's what we learned. The first thing we, we're going to do when we get another bike is get a heavy security chain. Now the cable lock I had, I mean, I figured, you know, it would deter somebody, but it wouldn't stop them. And, and unfortunately I was right. They make chains that are almost impossible to cut through. I suppose if you gave me uh, my high speed grinder and a, and a few four inch cutting discs, metal cutting discs, I'd get through it, but not without a lot of effort and a lot of noise. Number two is a cover. My bike was red and I'm sure it was really tempting for the wrong person. If we had kept it covered, I think we would still own it. Motion lights. We're going to put some uh, motion lights around the rig. That way if, if it detects movement, the lights will come on and hopefully hopefully deter them. This may be a non-tip, but after the bike was stolen, we since learned that there actually has been a rash of thefts. We only learned this from some longtime residents. We were going to give you a tip of asking when you check in if there's been a rash of thefts, but we're not so sure that they would even be honest with you and tell you. Yeah, they're, they're still saying that, that um, thefts are not common around here. So, I mean, it, even after they tell, told us that, well, the homeless probably did it. I talked to a longtime resident. She'd been here five years, and in that time, she lost four things. And I've also talked to other longtime residents who also were very aware of the theft situation. The management does not want to admit that there is a theft situation. So even though we're including this as a tip to ask, just be aware that they may not be honest. So perhaps the best tip is to assume that yes, there are thefts <laughs> going on in, in the yeah. area, especially, unfortunately. Especially in the kind of park we're in, even though it's an upscale park, the backside is open to public land. So we back up to a county park. If you have an e-bike, take the battery out when you're storing it. We did, we lost the bike, but we still have the battery. And that's like $800. And of course the bike is worth much, much less to them. One thing that we learned by calling the company that makes the bike is they will not sell a battery to anyone unless they have proof of purchase. So the people that stole this bike, they're not gonna be able to get a battery for it. Yeah, they basically have a, a worthless e-bike at this point. Um, it's it's pretty, it's got a lot of high-end components on it, but the, the motor is useless. So they, they, can, they can ride it like a regular bike, but sadly I think it's just going to be carved up and sold for parts. Yeah, more than likely. If you have any tips or stories about thefts that, you, that have happened to you, share them in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.